I have been building websites for around 4 years and yes it is really hard there are many types of websites landing pages portfolios e-commerce sites static page online games and many more but everything narrow downs to two main categories showcasing and show offing show offing websites are just marketing pages designed to hook the audience and get into their brain making them feel like it's the best thing they have ever seen the best example of this is the apple's website They spend hours creating their product pages just to hook the user, convincing them to buy it if they have the money. That's how they designed it. These websites are more design focused since they can't be used for the whole day. The design is created in such a way that the user goes through the entire website. Showcasing websites on the other hand are often used to provide a user experience. The main goal of these websites is to make users spend more time on their platform. Look at YouTube. You click on a video but you see another video on the side and you click on that and this whole process repeats. Apps like YouTube want their users to stay on their platform as long as possible. That's why their entire website is designed to make their audience hook on the website while at the same time giving the users a simple and intuitive design. Building these kinds of website isn't easy, but having analyzed hundreds of websites, I have discovered a common thread among the most successful ones and it all comes down to four key elements what why how were the first step is understanding why there is a need for this website there are many reasons for building a website such as marketing apple is the king of marketing for each product they have created a dedicated page and they are really good at creating a story they don't just list reasons to buy their latest product instead they showcase it with high contrast images and 3d models and more every time you scroll through their website you discover a new reason to make a purchase another reason for building a website is to provide useful informations like news or even like wikipedia All Wikipedia does is you ask for the content you get it no bullshit content except for them asking donations these days it's really weird but they also have to make some money right there are also some websites that serve as a gateway to a new universe i mean look at this website these websites are so good that they will give you a mental orgasm but they are mainly designed to showcase the skill of designers and developers in the real world everyone wants things as simple as possible Once you understand the why you need website part you can now move on to the next part what do you want to focus on is it getting users to stay hooked on the platform is it users doing some actions like buying something or clicking something or is it just you want to make an information rich website different things requires different approaches look at youtube youtube gives 100 reasons to stay on the website you can search for something on the search bar on the left side you have different options here at the top you have various categories to choose from and let's not forget about the videos if you click on a video on the right side it will show you a lot of similar videos that are recommended to you the chances of you clicking on that video are really high but on websites like amazon they need more sales and they have to work on the psychology to make people buy something when you first see a product page what will you focus on it's not really you focusing it's actually them making you focus that the use of red color to say limited time deal and you feel like it's like a steal also they show a 48% off but the price has been the same for more than a year now your eye goes to the buy now button because it's the second brightest button there and just clicking some buttons four more times the item will be on its way to your home see so simple right even a stone age man can really understand it now that you have understood the what and why of your business you now understand that what you want let's now get into the part where we actually build these things before starting to build these things you have to have a design that meets your demand sites like dribble showcases thousands of designs but please don't pick just one they are often concept designs and while they may have many design elements you need simplicity you don't need high contrast colors every time people love simplicity some designs like this one are really good simple yet effective since most developers struggle with design you can either hire a designer who understand your vision or you can just take inspiration from others idea but please don't copy everything add your own vibe to it the design part is now over now it's time for development Development is supposed to be the easiest thing, right? You have around 100 different JavaScript frameworks and 1000 different CSS libraries to choose from. So simple, right? Gone are the days where HTML, CSS and JavaScript could be used to build everything. But nowadays we spend most of the time deciding on the framework that we want to use. You can use anything you want. React, Angular, Vue, Next.js, they all are good at something and they all suck at something. 
Using something like React makes everything so simple. You build the component once, you use it when needed, which makes the development flow much easier. You can also use something like Tailwind CSS, Chat CN, Ascent UI, or simply use Vanilla CSS. No user have ever said, oh, this website is using Tailwind CSS. I'm not going to use this. They simply need a website to work smoothly. They doesn't care about your tech stack. All that matters for the users is to have a simple and understandable UI. Since you don't have to start everything from scratch, a simple tech stack like React, Next.js, Tailwind, a database, and Stripe can make everything possible on your website. Building the website is the most flexible part. All you need to know is where to find and yes, if you know how to find, there is a JavaScript library for it. Now you are not restricted to these code solutions. You can also use the no-code tools like Framer, Wix, or Webflow for building these websites with minimal coding and maximum productivity. Since I have been coding so long, my ego hurts when I use these tools. So I stick with coding. For the backend, you can use any popular tech stack like Mern, Pins, and or anything. In the backend, you only have to focus on security of your application and improving the speed and performance of your application. I mean, look at YouTube handling millions of videos for billions of users. You need to have better servers, and it will cost billions of dollars to make applications smooth. Now, since initially when you build a website scaling is not your first priority visibility is your first priority you can't build a perfect system you incrementally improve the system to be the best now that your system is ready to be seen worldwide it's time to buy a domain name for it your domain name should be a simple and memorable name not a long string of words you pay the price you get the domain and host it now you might expect thousands of views on your website that's not how things work sometimes you have to tweak something i mean like if your title or your catchphrase is is weird and not intuitive, no one will ever go further. You need to have some A-B testing to find the best one. People often mock web developers saying that it's the easiest job. Now, nah, it needs more design thinking, ideation, logical thinking, and a reasonable thinking to build an actual website. Putting contents here and there and building a website are two different things. And everything narrows down to one main thing. Know your audience. That's how Netflix trick their users. Click on this video to see more about that. If you have reached this far in this video, comment down I reached here. I will see you later with an interesting video. Meanwhile, let me know how this video was and consider subscribing to my channel.